Good morning, Belen. I'm Stephen Kayas. And I'm Frankie Menendez. And welcome to this edition of WBLN for today, September 21st, 2016. Congratulations to the six commended students in the 2017 National Merit Scholarship Program. They are Sebastian Suarez, Patrick Mayer, Juan Fernandez de Castro, Kevin Lemus, Jovier Jimenez, and Michael Moreno. Each student was presented a certificate by our principal, Jose Roca, and President Father Willie. Great honor because about 1.6 million people took the, the PSAT last October and only a very finite amount of students were selected to compete for the National Merit uh, Scholar uh, competition. So to be, to be commended as a National Merit Scholar is obviously something that uh, myself and a few other classmates are very proud of and we're very supportive of Esteban Gio who moved up to semi-finalists and hopefully to be a finalist at Italy. Interested in visiting Beijing, Shanghai, Taipei, Hualien and Sun Moon Lake? If you are a student, a student's family member, and or alumni, you are eligible to go on this amazing trip. The OSP meeting for China will be at 7 p.m. in the Coscuela Dining Hall on Thursday, September 22nd. This past weekend, the Belen Tour kicked off in New York. The goal? To connect with alumni from around the country and re-engage them by informing them about all the wonderful things happening on Belen's campus. I'm able to talk to the alumni about uh, how Belen is doing and what the future plans of the school are. They express incredible enthusiasm and the, unanimously they asked us to keep coming back every year because it was a great opportunity to bring everybody together. They're living in the same city. Uh, many times they didn't even know who that each other were living there and so it gave them an opportunity to come together. And uh, what brings them together is their love for Belen. The alumni tour has four stops scheduled this academic year with the hopes of adding more the following. And so far, all the alumni are answering the call. I think Belen is a, an illustration of the survival of the Cuban people leaving Cuba and all the great things that, that, uh, that the school's become and I think most importantly what it teaches its, its alumni uh, and I think, that, I think the most important thing it teaches us is, is how to survive and how to, how to adapt and how to, how to uh, find our way through any situation. And I think for me, my greatest friends you know, throughout college, throughout my experience working, is really my, my group of friends in, in Belen. I, I keep connected with them on my own, but, you know, I really make use of the Alumni Association through the reunions and the connectivity that it gives the entire school uh, to really connect with, you know, the, maybe not the entire 90 uh, kids in my class, but, you know, a, a good number of them, people that I probably would have lost touch with. And, and that connection, I think, is is an important, an important part of, of all of our lives as we get older. And the, the Alumni Association is a big part of that for, for many of us. And many of us who are outside that can't be day to day with, with some of our, of our, our vulnerable and brothers. In other news, what may possibly have been a war crime stopped the UN from sending aid convoys to Syria entirely. The Obama administration publicly held Russia responsible for the attack. And just a week ago, Russia and the U.S. signed a partial ceasefire agreement. If Russia did bomb the trucks, this would be considered a serious war crime. However, there's still not enough evidence to support the claim. Ahmad Khan Rami is in custody after a shootout Monday morning with police in Linden, New Jersey. Rami moved to the U.S. in 1995 as a child and became a naturalized citizen in 2011. Officials say Rami traveled for extended periods of time to Afghanistan and Pakistan in the last five years, and even married a Pakistani woman. According to officials, his wife left the U.S. a few days before the attacks. Authorities are now working with officials in Pakistan and the United Arab Emirates to get access to her. Four officers were injured in the shootout and transported to two hospitals. Saturday's blast injured 31 people in New York City and an explosion that occurred near a charity race in Seaside Park, New Jersey earlier that day. According to senior law enforcement officials, investigators first identified Rami Sunday afternoon. They were able to identify him through a fingerprint left on the cell phone and on the pressure cooker found at 27th Street location in Manhattan. Also, some clues. A witness says Rami was asleep in the vestibule of a bar near his home. His last known address was in Elizabeth, New Jersey. That's the same city where multiple bombs were found inside a backpack Sunday night. Rami has been charged with attempted murder. Tomorrow, the Key Club will be holding a blood drive in the gym lobby. 16- and 17-year-old students may donate. You must bring in parent consent forms before Thursday. 
For more information, please see Angel Aguilar or Mr. Calderin in C201. Now let's see what's going on around our hallways. The chess club is meeting all week in room G205. The speech and debate team is meeting in room I-102. National Honor Society will be meeting at 3 p.m. in the Roca Theater on Thursday. The production club will meet at 3.05 in room C-203. All students interested in film or television production may attend. The Beta Club is meeting Tuesday, the 27th, will be at the Roca Theater. Operation Small Student Club will be having their first meeting on Monday, September 26th at 3.05 in H-221. All students are welcome to come. Join us in raising awareness and funds for children who need surgery for lip or facial deformities. Morning Berlin. It's hump day guys. As you can see on the map, partly cloudy with scattered showers throughout the area. That may change through the afternoon. Also, keep in mind guys, there's some action going on in the Caribbean. Stay locked in for more information. Today, I'll have a high 91, a low 77, relative humidity at 77%. Winds coming in at the east at 11 miles per hour and only a 30% chance of rain. Let's take a look at your next three days. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday is looking pretty okay with highs in the low 90s and lows in the mid to high 70s with 30% chance of rain for your next three days. That's all for your forecast. Now let's bounce it on the sports. Good morning, Wolverine Nation. It was a beautiful day to be in blue and gold as the JV golf team defeated the Columbus Explorers by a score of 174 to 179. Belen was led by Kevin Aspiri and Nick Tobon with scores of 39 and 41. The Blend Varsity golf team finished third out of 11 teams in the Dade County Youth Fair golf tournament, which was shortened to nine holes due to weather conditions. Leading the way for Blend were Enrique Vila, Beto Perez, Guilla Najera, and Daniel Chavez with scores of 38, 39, 39, and 41 for a total of 157. Blend Jesuit sixth grade basketball team defeated St. Kevin 41-25. The JV football game against Gulliver at home is being canceled at Gulliver's request. The visiting school no longer has a team. The varsity swim team is scheduled to swim against Columbus in a rescheduled meet at the visitor's request. 
Student athletes in grades 6 through 12 interested in wrestling will have workouts starting at 3.30 today. Tickets to this Saturday Columbus versus Belen Jesuit football game can be purchased in the bookstore. Any unsold tickets by this Thursday will be returned to Columbus and will be sold on Saturday. Gate prices will go up to $20 on game day. The Blend Visitor side only has 3,000 seats available, so be sure to purchase your tickets. The Miami Marlins are making a final playoff push as they are currently four games back from the Mets, Cardinals, and Giants, who are all tied for the two wildcard spots. Jose Fernandez is good at home, historically good. Among qualified pitchers, Fernandez has the best home ERA of all time. This time was no different. Fernandez outlasted Nationals pitcher Tanner Roark, throwing eight scoreless frames with three hits allowed and 12 strikeouts. Giancarlo Stanton provided the only offense with a solo home run to right field as the Marlins win 1-0. And finally, tomorrow the New England Patriots are hosting the Houston Texans on Thursday night football. The Patriots and Texans look to both go 3-0 as the Patriots have third-string QB Jacoby Brissett leading the way. That's all for sports. Now back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Brown. Be sure to follow us on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook for all the latest news and pictures. I'm Stephen Kayas. And I'm Frankie Menendez. And from all of us here at WBLN Studios, have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching, and stay golden, Wolverines.